Do you need a GoPro to capture motorcycle content? Yes, of, of course. I, I know, but let me explain further. Uh, here we go. You see, I've been using this GoPro Hero 9 to capture a lot of the content on this channel. And honestly, I'm tired of it. But that's not really what we're trying to answer. Should you purchase a GoPro to start your YouTube Motovlog channel? And I had this discussion actually with Clutch First uh, a while ago, actually, now that I think about it, on a live stream on a Sunday of his. And it was really interesting to break down and understand what motovlogging is in this day and age, where it came from, and how we're advancing in this progression of YouTube and what it looks like. I'm not going to go super deep into the analytics really to try to answer this question and continue on the story, but at the end of the day, do you need a GoPro? Should it be valuable? Should it be something worthwhile? And if you remember back to that live podcast, really, it's kind of a different world from where we started. Motovlogging years ago, when I started watching YouTube and I started really enveloping myself in that realm, it was a lot of wall terrific, where it was just putting a GoPro on your face and being goofy and riding around and handing out spam cards and having a whole good time, to where we see today, where I try to separate my content with cameras, with drones, with a lot of other sort of aspects of storytelling to really bring that point across, as well as somebody I, mean, I absolutely love to watch his moto feels. I think he does a great job of explaining camera work. He has awesome adventures, some of his ASMR camping stuff. So, so cool. And that's really where I see this progression going. So to dial it into the question that I've asked, I think now a hundred times, should you buy a GoPro? And as much as I hate to say it, the answer should be yes. Now, Riding a motorcycle already is a difficult skill that you have to spend time, you have to practice, you have to understand. You have to learn a lot of things, including getting a license and going through the procedures of operating these all year round and make sure you're paying attention. Now with that too, you don't have the conveniences and comforts that you would in a normal car. So bringing a camera like that, bringing a drone along, that's a backpack, that's a lot of involvement, that's planning. GoPros are probably the easiest way to capture that content. All you really need to do is stick them to the front of your helmet, the side of your helmet, the top of your helmet, wherever you want, even on the bike, hit record, and go. Now, of course, it's a little more complicated, but it's a style that's been used, tried and true, over the years, and it's definitely what I would recommend is the first piece. Now, this GoPro specifically, I've had a lot of issues. Remember the last episode with the drone? You're going to have active tr It absolutely cut out on me. And I've noticed that GoPros lately have been getting worse. Now, I haven't had a lot of on-hand on on contact with the new 12, or probably what they're going to release with a 13, or probably skip 13 and call it a 14. Conspiracy theories, I swear. Take a look at this! Jesus Christ, that right there! But it's been really pretty bad. The old 7 that I had was awesome. I loved it. It was great. It was so easy to use. It worked every time. It didn't destroy footage. This 9, eh, practically garbage. And you do need a lot of other aspects as well to make sure that it works with your helmet and your setup. So some of the things that I use for my setup, a media mod, some ND filters because I like the way that it looks, a microphone, and a cord to connect the microphone to the GoPro, and well, the mount, which is probably the most important part. So instead of talking about this, let's put it all together and let's see what it looks like. I pray to God this thing works. Please work. Checking to see if it's recording. It's recording. Oh, this thing's got a little dust on her. So now that we're on our way and up and moving, you can kind of see what it looks like. I'll put the settings that I have that I'm running currently for this in the bottom right corner. So you can kind of understand the look, the feel. I like the way it kind of gives a good motion blur, how I can expose. And honestly, I don't color grade with this footage. It just comes straight out the camera. Yay, anything to make my life a little bit easier. But this view right here, I think is absolutely iconic. I think it's a necessity to have a GoPro on your helmet, in your arsenal, at all times. It's something that, despite the uh, times it works, times it doesn't work, I think it's an incredible way to capture some footage, 
and moments that you otherwise wouldn't be able to capture. Uh, it's also good for safety reasons. I think I've had plenty of close calls with a GoPro on my head and I'm glad it was recording. Um, also, if people attempt to pull out or do illegal things, it's uh, nice to have a little bit of a reference point to say, nah, I didn't do it. You can check the footage. Yes, this is real. I've done that before. Ah, it's always traffic. Oh! Check if it's still recording. It's still recording. Come on. There we go. I think it's also cool that you can use this GoPro for many different things. So it doesn't just have to be on your helmet. You can put it in different spots of the bike, grab different angles, and really kind of help you to tell the story. One thing is I don't use a GoPro as much as I used to. Uh, I try to avoid it. I try to develop more and use it just as a piece in the puzzle, like the drone is a new piece to the puzzle, like a 360 camera, like a full DSLR mirrorless camera. And I think to really develop a good story and to separate yourself from the rest of the moto vloggers, having multiple different items is kind of important or is almost a necessity if you want to grow your channel. Now, if you don't want to grow your channel and you're just doing this for fun, kind of like I do, and you just have a passion for photography, videography, and have been, yeah, making really stupid videos for a long time, I think starting with a GoPro is your best bet. Come on, come on, come on, man, go! Turn. And honestly, the commentary is really fun. My turn signal's still on. So final thought, should you buy a GoPro? Should that be your first purchase? Absolutely. I am all on the GoPro on the helmet mount train, even if a lot of people think that it's starting to fall off. But it's such an important piece of equipment, gear to really start and get you out there that I would just go out and buy this GoPro first or any of the other versions like DJI's got one a few other companies make them but honestly I stick with the GoPro platform even with the issues because I've got already so much stuff for it so I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you're enjoying this series so far let me know if I've missed anything if you've got some references or some key insights that I don't know because I like to learn too then put them in the comments down below but as I hit this traffic and I bore myself with flat Chicago areas I'll leave you to this, to just remember, keep riding. That was a terrible way to do it. I hope this thing is still recording.